Um, yeah, thank you for letting me present our work here. Um, and this is a great presentation of the, um, uh, like a great topic after the great presentation of, uh, of Steffi. Um, While well, she presented uh, more the practical part and uh, her experiences in, uh, in the field testing, I will go a bit more on the theory behind it. Um, and in particular, uh, I will focus on the uh, ISO 9972 and, and the constraints the standard sets on the zero flow pressure difference um, uh, Steffi already uh, explained. Um, yeah, the ISO 9972 is the standard which usually usually measures the um, or sets the frame for measuring the air permeability of buildings using the blow order test or the frame pressurization method. And um, as Steffi explained, it's um, you need to measure the zero flow or the natural pressure difference before and after each time you conduct the test. And this zero flow pressure difference is basically the pressure difference between inside and outside the building when this building is not artificially pressurized. So uh, this means if it's not um, pressurized by, by a, a, a fan. Um, so this is can can have two two causes. It's either wind or or stack, and um, stack is in particular prominent for stack effect for high rise buildings. So it's the the standard clearly defines the limits um, of these constraints or of this zero flow pressure difference to limit the influence of the wind and temperature influences on the later um, measurement result result itself itself, and it says two. Um, constraints um, that should be kept for a measurement to be valid. The first one is that this absolute value of the zero flow pressure difference should be lower than five Pascal. And if you see the measurement of, of um, result of Steffi, where she said this is this can be up to 66 Pascal for one of the towers. So this is uh, by far exceeded. Um, so it's 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 in within these con conditions, it's not possible to test the building according to the standard here at least. And the second one is the lowest measured pressure station with um, the blower door should be 10 Pascal or five times this zero flow pressure difference, whatever it's, it's larger. And if you see um, <clears throat> the uh, 66 Pascal pressure difference, uh, natural pressure difference times five, um, then you can calculate yourself uh, how, how large the lowest pressure station should be. So I would like to um, discuss several questions in this presentation here <clears throat> to understand um, these, the effectiveness of these constraints and um, how, they, how the zero flow pressure differences affect the measurement of um, the, er or the errors of the measurement of the airflow we measure at the end. So um, the first question is, um, what is the error of the measured airflow uh, related to this zero flow pressure difference. The second one is, um, Steffi a, a bit explained what, 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 what parts are influencing or may influence these uh, zero flow pressure differences. So, but which parameters in detail um, have an influence and how much do they influence the zero flow pressure difference? Um, <clears throat> does the pressure tap position um, gives you different results of the zero flow pressure difference? Um, and yeah, might there be possible alternative constraints that could be applied when the ones in ISO, which I explained um, in, the, in the last slide, are not impossible to reach, for example, for the high-rise buildings. So <clears throat> to approach this, we um, implemented a, a stack effect model. So we, we, in this model, we only evaluated the stack effect and not wind, so just this effect. So we have simulated a, a, a artificial building with a certain height, and um, this has, we can pressurize or depressurize the building through the, through the fan here. And we have two leaks. One is on the bottom in this model and one is on the top. So the, we're very extreme. And we assume here we have um, higher indoor temperatures than outdoor temperatures. Um, as we saw in the last presentation, is that this this may cause the higher error as well, and um, we may be able to measure the, the the pressure difference at the top and at the bottom here. So <clears throat> then we did some. I, I will not go in detail to this equation. Um, 
you can read it later in the paper. I, we published a paper about this, but uh, we found out that the zero flow pressure difference, um, according to um, the stack model, um, looks like this. Um, so this is um, always negative, and it depends on the um, uh, stack pressure. And this stack pressure, it's defined here on the right part, is um, depends on the temperature difference between inside and outside, and the um, the building height. And it's um, the stack pressure is defined as basically the difference between the um, the top and the bottom pressure we measure here. So um, the top pressure is basically the bottom pressure plus this stack pressure here on the top. So this is one. So it depends on the temperature difference and the height. It additionally depends on the pressure exponent, which is the exponent usually used in the um, in the power law equation to calculate the airflow from the pressure difference. And this is something um, well, uh, Steffi already mentioned in her presentation. It depends on the leakage distribution. So the leakage is, we, we often assume that the leakage is uh, evenly distributed across the high, but Steffi showed as well in her measurements, that's not the case. Um, so, but this is how um, this, the leakage distribution, in our case, we define it as the side leak at the top. So, if the if this is if this, this non-dimensional leakage distribution is very high, we have a lot of leaks at the top, and if it's very low, we have a lot of leaks at the bottom. So, this this part is is higher here. So, this is how um, <clears throat> it uh, it is composed uh, according to um, the equation we derived here. But how does it affect um, the estimation of the airflow and uh, uh, yeah the airflow error at the end? In the ISO, uh, we assume that we can estimate uh, the airflow um, due to the uh, to the blower door, um, so the induced airflow, or I would say, by um, the measured pressure station um, subtracted by the zero flow pressure difference, which is the induced pressure here. Um, but um, um, we can, if we if we say this is um, this airflow, we assume that this might be the same <clears throat> as the airflow through the bottom and to the top of top leak, which is um, in our airflow model here on the top right. Um, <clears throat> we can say that the error of the airflow can be. Um, can be estimated, um, yeah, but um, through the leakage coefficients for the left model and for the right model. So by subtracting the leakage coefficients and dividing it by uh, the, the estimated leakage minus the real leakage coefficient divided by the real leakage coefficient give, gives us um, basically the error between these two equations here. Um, so we can um, uh, we can multiply this equation simply on both on both parts the top and the bottom by this um, this part here and if we insert here in the top this part of the equation here um, we can uh, further um, calculate by um, introducing a non-dimensional pressure here which is the the stack pressure divided by this the the, the measured pressure station we can um, <clears throat> we can um, Evaluate the airflow, the error of the airflow due to the stack pressure at the bottom part of the. Um, if we measure it here at the bottom part of the of the uh, uh, building, yeah, this is quite complicated equation here. But I will I will show you how it looks like in some some figures later. We did the same <clears throat> to see um, for the for the wind um, because, as I said earlier, it's not the stack is not the only. Um, um, part which influences the, the, the zero flow pressure differences. This can be influenced by the wind as well. And we assumed here um, steady wind for the first, um, for our first assumption and said, okay, we have a simplified model where we have one leak at the, again, at the windward facade. So the, the facade which is um, facing the wind and one at the downward facade, uh, on the leeward facade. And we have um, equal temperatures inside and outside. So, if we have equal temperatures inside and outside, we um, 
neglect in, in the the stack effect here to be able to separate both wind and stack here. Yeah, now we have a kind of small problem because um, the ISO not clearly says uh, where should we measure our um, our pressure tap for um, the stack effect model. It was it was pretty clear to measure the 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 the, the, the um, to measure it at the bottom, uh, the, stack, uh, the zero flow pressure difference, but um, we can either measure it here at the um, next to the building envelope. Um, so it's the pressure difference across the building envelope or um, far away, which is called like the equilibrium internal pressure difference. So far away from the building and any obstacles like trees or cars. And um, the, but the ISO clearly not defined as this um, clearly which one to use. So we see if this is um, this has differences in the equations and in the airflow error where to measure if we measure upwards up uh, in the windward facade or the leeward facade or farther away from the building. So we derived um, to shorten this a bit um, for the upwind measurement position. So here if we measure directly next to the building facade we found out this is the um, the um, equation for um, uh, estimating this the zero flow pressure difference. Now this defend this is again always negative, um, and it depends on the upwind pressure, which is the pressure um, at the upwind facade here, depending on um, the pressure coefficient here, which is always positive, and um, the square of the wind speed, um, and on the um, the pressure on the downwind facade, which is always where, which is always negative because the CP coefficient is always negative, and it again depends on the um, on the wind speed. Um, similar to the stack effect model, it depends on the pressure coefficient and on the leakage distribution. Whereas the leakage distribution here is uh, defined as the the size of the leak at the downwind facade divided by the size of the leak of the um, upwind facade. In a similar way, we can estimate the airflow error here, um, which is um, shortened up. Um, looks like this. Um, you don't need to remember this. It's um, I will I will show you how it looks like um, in the graph later. Um, with um, a newly introduced non-dimensional pressure, which is the relationship between the upwind minus downwind pressure divided by the measured pressure station. Um, yeah, we can do the same uh, derivation for the downwind. It looks similar but a bit different so we have i've compared i've put the other equation here so it's at the other side of the building so it's always positive um and it's um the the dependency here on uh, on the leakage distribution is a bit different here in the lower part of this um, equation here so we have this is the airflow error equation here it's getting a bit more interesting if we if we assume the um, equilibrium internal pressure difference here. The equation looks a bit different. Different. It's not like here we have um, the p up minus p down at the pot uh, at the top, so it's always positive or always negative. This zero flow pressure difference. It's it can be positive or negative depending on the leakage distribution. So it's uh, again here the distribution of the leakages around the building is important. Um, we have here at the top part of the building, we have um, P up plus a, a factor depending the leakage distribution times P down. So if we know P down um, is always negative and P up is always positive, um, this uh, leakage distribution can uh, influence if this whole equation is positive or negative. So if this is very large, means if we have a lot of um, leakages on the downwind facade, this whole equation gets negative. And then if it's very small, so it means if we have a lot of leakage on the upwind facade, this um, uh, zero flow pressure difference gets positive. So it um, really depends on this factor. And for this, the, um, the equation of the um, airflow error gets a bit more complicated. But to conclude this, um, at the end, we found um, quite similar equations for um, this airflow error and the zero flow pressure difference for the for measuring at the upwind facade for wind and for uh, measuring the stack effect. Um, we have for both, we have a, a we call it a for pressure force, which is here the difference between upwind and downwind pressure. And here it's the stack pressure. Um, so we can kind of formulate some um, um, 
equation which is valid for both of them. Um, yeah, to, to see how, how this looks like, uh, we made a quite detailed simulation uh, of various building scenarios, which is not possible to measure in real buildings because we have not that much, um, because we are not able to measure these much buildings or this many buildings. So we have put different input var variables. We have um, simulated different uh, pressure exponent between 0 0.5 and 0 0.9. We have uh, simulated um, different multipoint um, blow order tests between 10 and 100 Pascal uh, pressure difference um, or minus depending on pressure dif pressurizing or depressurizing the building. We have simulated wind speeds up to 10 meters per second, um, different leakage distributions where most of the leakages are at downwind or upwind or at the bottom or at the top of the building. We have investigated different temperature differences um, up to 20 Kelvin. Um, and um, different heights of the building. So from very small, like from very normal size building or small buildings from four meters height up until 100 meters with meters buildings, which is in the order of magnitude um, what uh, Steffi tested or showed in her last presentation. So all in all, we have simulated over 3 million wind and 7 million uh, stack pressure buildings um, or scenarios. And I show you the, res the result. So here you see the first result of a stack um, uh, measurement. Um, and um, here you see basically every point is a, is, 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 is a different com combination of um, all these parameters I showed you earlier. What you see here on the x-axis is um, the measured pressure station. So uh, for our, this could be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 Pascal for our, uh, test and divided by um, the zero flow pressure we have um, calculated for this specific scenario. Um, and on the y-axis, we have, you have the airflow error. So you see which error do we have if we have measured a certain, um, or what, what could be the maximum error we have in our building if we measure, for example, uh, an airflow of 50 Pascal and previously measured um, an um, uh, uh, zero flow pressure of five, for example. So you can can go and then you can see what what is what is the maximum flow airflow error we get from this combination. So how much do the zero flow pressure difference um, we measure um, affect every point of our multipoint measurement? Um, uh, how much does it this lead to to an error in estimating the airflow? Additionally, I've colored here. Um, the um, all measurement points according to the leakage distribution. Um, so a leakage distribution of which is um, black here um, means we have uh, a Z between 0 0.5 and 2, which which is um, a Z of 1 would be an equal leakage distribution between the bottom and the top. So this means, okay, we have almost equal leakage distribution between bottom and top. Um, if it's getting more light blue, we have most of the leakage at the bottom. And if it's more here in this um, brownish, which you see here, but it's on the top. You see all the pressurization tests on the left side and the depressurization on the right side, um, because it always has only one sign different depending on pressurization and depressurization. And you see here, okay, if we have very small values here on the x-axis, um, though this means we have, um, very high zero flow pressure differences, we can get very high errors as well, which makes sense. Um, and the higher this way you get to the right or to the left, um, it means we have um, low um, zero flow pressure differences. So the airflow error goes, goes down. This makes sense. So if we apply to this um, the set of measurements, the constraints set by ISO 9972, this means, um, uh, I remove all the points according to the constraints I earlier introduced, which are all the points lower than, uh, which have a uh, zero flow pressure difference lower than five Pascal. And I only include points that are um, with the lowest pressure station higher than five times delta P zero. And this shows um, that um, all the points here between min minus five and five are removed because these are all the points where um, 
this second constraint is not met. And this shows us very interest in, interestingly that um, even though most people, uh, this is the second point, the uh, second constraint seems the one uh, removing more um, uh, high error points from our measurement. So this seems to be even the more important one. And you can see here, um, I showed you um, the um, most probable maximum error here of our airflow. This means if you have equal leakage distribution, it's about 16%, but it can still be for some unlikely leakage distributions up to 45% um, error. And this is um, especially for the one where the most leaks are the, at the bottom, uh, which is a, a configuration which can, can come quite often. Um, for example, if you have large shops in the bottom of a high-rise building have a part, quite tight apartments at the top, you can have this kind of leakage distribution here. But um, now I come to the buffer um, uh, Steffi already um, referred to. So if, we, if we're measuring the building and apply a certain buffer on top of our, um, um, to the zero flow pressure difference, um, if we, say we, this buffer should be at least 10 pascal. Um, I remove all of these um, of the points that are not met in this with this um, alternative constraint to have a, uh, an additional buffer of 10 pascal um, and not applying the ISO constraints. I remove all these high error points here. So um, if we if we would say um, for high-rise building, these constraints here should not be met, but we should have um, at least a margin or an, error, an, an additional pressure, pressure or depressure of 10 Pascal, this would reduce um, the maximum possible error from 55%, uh, 45% um, to, yeah, like, would say 15%. So um, we would keep the maximum possible error of our airflow quite low. Yeah, we can do this the same for the for the different um, uh, wind measurements me measurement position. If we have here um, measuring at the upwind position, um, I colored the same for equal leakage distributions. Um, I colored as the same here. We can remove most of the points with the ISO constraints, uh, at least for the most um, um, for the for the for the uh, points with the uh, most probable um, leakage distributions, we can, th these are getting very low here with applying the ISO constraints, but the overall error gets lower if we apply this 10 Pascal um, rule, I would say. Um, Valerie will go on this um, her, um, in her next presentation a bit more as well. We can do the same for the downwind position. It looks a bit similar, but um, the, um, the colorization of the uh, uh, it's a bit different because we measure, measure at the other part, uh, other side of the building. So it's pretty much the same. We can reduce it um, to uh, to um, a value of around 15 Pascal, uh, 15 percent here, and an error. Um, it's getting a bit more chaotic if we're measuring the equilibrium pressure difference. The the equation looks a bit um, bit more um, more chaotic. Um, so we are not able to 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 visualize as here all the points uh, of depressurization and pressurization in one graph. We need two graphs for them because either for pressurization or for depressurization, the zero flow pressure difference according to the equation can be either positive or negative in this point. Um, but we see here for pressurization, um, the more likely, um, I would say, um, uh, configurations of uh, Leakage distributions are here on on this side, on, and here they are on the right side of the of the graph. Again, we can apply the ISO constraints and can remove um, most of the uh, high probable errors or leakage uh, building configurations, but still um, with this um, additional margin of 10 pascal on top of our pressure or depressurization measurement, we can reduce the overall um, possible. Um, uh, maximum possible error to uh, uh, a maximum of around 15%. Yeah, to conclude this presentation, um, the ISO 9972 constraints do and do significantly reduce flow errors, um, and that should that is that's that's the goal of them. 
Um, however, um, these strict constraints, uh, constraints uh, often prevent very high rise buildings or windings, uh, buildings in windy locations from being test, test according to the, to the standard. Um, so the alternative would be to pressurize or depressurize an entire building with a margin of additionally 10 Pascal. And we get in the same error range as um, applying the ASO constraints. And it would be possible to test the buildings according to um, a standardized testing method. Um, this is um, shown here in the um, in this table. So you see the maximum probable error. This means um, if we have um, if we assume that we have an equal liquid distribution around the building, we have uh, according to the ISO constraints, we can in a very unlucky um, uh, distribution, we can even have a very high um, uh, error, but we can have a very low error as well. But so, but it, it, in the the new constraint limits the maximum error to to a narrow band of around maximum fifteen percent. But um, we cannot guarantee that we have an equal leakage distribution in our real field test. We, we simply do not know what what kind of leakage distribution we have if we test the building. Um, so we can have even with either even having the ISO constraints met. Um, have quite a high error up to 75% in some in some cases. And this new constraint would li really limit this to a maximum of 15-16%. Um, <clears throat> if this was a, a, like a lot of information now at once in this uh, 20 minutes, um, you can, you're very welcome to read the article. This was recently published about this topic in Energy and Buildings together with Valerie Adeline and uh, Bassam from Serama. And uh, you're you can find in this article the detailed derivation of these equations I introduced here. Um, so I'm very happy to answer questions about this topic. Um, you can reach me not anymore at this email address because I left Serama recently, but you can reach me on LinkedIn or any social platforms. But you're very happy to, Valerie is very happy to answer questions as well via email, I guess, right?